Hello, very pleasant evening to you, people across Guyana, and welcome to another program of Walter Rodney Grumlings. I'm your host, Dion Abrams, and with me on the program this evening is Dr. David Hines, uh, no stranger to you. Um, well, he's uh, an executive member of the Working People's Alliance and has been a part of the struggle all through the years from the 1970s right into the 80s and so on. And he's here as part of the uh, force that is seeking to bring change to this country. So we're going to be talking about things relevant to the current political situation in Guyana. We want to focus particularly on the APNU, the emergence of that uh, force that is ha would have brought parties together to contest the next elections. And in particular, we want to talk about this attack that has been launched by the PPP against Dr. Rupert Rupnarain, um, who has been a fighter for freedom in this country and who has a record of achievement in terms of the struggle in the political sphere for freedom and for democracy in Guyana. Now, Dr. Rupnarain, I should have said welcome to the program, but... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dion. <laughs> yeah. Now, Dr. Rupnarain is known for his position in relation to Guyana and the need to take the country forward. But the fact that the Working People's Alliance would have joined in this new partnership with the PNC and the other parties would have seen a kind of vehement attack from the PPP directed only at Dr. Rupnarain. Now, why have they singled out Dr. Rupnarain and not any other members of the party for this kind of attack? It's part of the PPP's long-standing strategy of dealing with Indian Guyanese leaders who do not belong to the PPP. Uh, the PPP has always felt that Indian Guyanese political activists should be part of the family. And if you do not belong to the family, you are supposedly a traitor. And it is within that context that they are attacking Dr. Rupnarain. Uh, because uh, when you look at the APNU and you look at what it stands for, uh, obviously it means that the APNU would try to attract as many Indian Guyanese brothers and sisters as possible. And the PPP understands that Dr. Rupert Rupnarain has had a long history in the struggle, as you've said, from 1977 to the present, uh, and that he has done extensive work over the years in the Indian Guyanese community. He's known in that community as a fearless fighter. And so, therefore, the attempt is to send a signal to uh, the, um, the, the Indian Guyanese community that here, Rupnarain may be a good man, he may be a bright man, he may be very astute politically, but he's not on our side, he's on the other side. And so it's a kind of racial scare tactic that they're using um, uh, against Dr. Rupnarain. The second uh, 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 reason that they're carrying the attack on Dr. Rupnarain is that they're trying to derail uh, his candidacy his possible candidacy for uh, the second spot, the prime ministerial spot in the APNU. As you would have known, um, in sections of the media, people on the streets are beginning to say that they would favor Dr. Rupert Rupnarain as the prime ministerial candidate. Now, of course, the AFC, sorry, the, the PPP, uh, fears that. And so, therefore, they're trying to derail his candidacy, um, sending a signal this time to other elements in the APNU that Rupnarain may not be your best candidate. So it's a kind of twofold attack. Um, and like I said, it's historically grounded. And, 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 and it's part of the uh, PPP's whole attitude over the years to dealing with these issues. So the WPA, in a press release, would have responded to the uh, attack on the um, Dr. Ruth Ryan. What, what is your defense in the face of this attack? Well, I mean, we are very clear. The Working People's Alliance was formed in 1974 as a pressure group bringing together uh, uh, several organizations, ASCRIA, 
April Ratoon, the Working People's Vanguard Party. And we came together in 1974 on the basis, two things. First, that Guyana cannot move forward unless we are able to mobilize all the ethnic groups, and particularly the contending ethnic groups, Indians and Africans, under the same kind of a program under, the, um, uh, under one umbrella. We are very clear in our minds that unless we have ethnic unity, unless we have uh, 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 what Walter Rodney used to say, uh, 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 ethnic unity in action, that is people struggling across ethnic lines around common issues, that we are not going to go forward. Now, attendant to that, we also felt that no single party in the country had the capacity to move the country forward, given the, 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 the complexity of the situation. So that, so that in order to bring the various ethnic groups together, it meant that we had to bring the various political forces together to pool our resources in a joint effort in order to move the country together. Clive Thomas would say uh, from way back in the 1960s uh, uh, that if we want economic development in the country, we have to have a political solution. And that political solution has to be premised on ethnic unity, but it had to be premised also on partnership of all the various political parties. So we, we were very clear about that. Now, the forces in the WPA in the 1970s had fundamental differences with the PPP. The PPP believed in a certain kind of uh, 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 a dogmatic uh, uh, kind of Marxism, a kind of Moscow-oriented kind of thing. We in the WPA came out of a different tradition. We came out of what some uh, called in during that period a kind of new left, um, that our uh, 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 ideological orientation was based on, it was a pan-Caribbean orientation, was an orientation that, 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 that looks at working class solidarity, but looks at it within the context of a national movement, national cohesion. And so we were not dogmatic on the, 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 the ideological, ideological issue, the, P, uh, the PPP was, right? We also had differences, and this is ironic, we had differences with the PPP on the role of the PNC, all right? That the PPP was adamant in the 1970s and up through the 1980s uh, that the PNC must be part of any, any national solution. Now, the irony is that today they don't want the PNC to be part of any national solution. No, our position in the 1970s was like, look, um, at that time, the PNC was in government, and so therefore they were part of the problem, uh, and so therefore there must be conditions on, on, on which they become part of the solution. And we said then, that a PNC that agrees to free and fair election must be part of a national solution. We reiterated that in 1984 in a document called Forward to the, the Democratic Republic, presented by Brother EUC, EUC Kwayana at the trade union, uh, the TUC, at a, a, a conference they had, in which we said very clearly, that the way forward after the demise of the Grenadian Revolution has to be around the free and fair elections. And that once the PNC agrees to free and fair election, that, that we are prepared to work with them. We are very clear. So our working with the PNC today is not something that we cooked up yesterday. It's part of our historical uh, uh, tradition. It's part of our whole notion of uh, uh, national unity. The question is not whether in fact we are betraying Rodney. The Rodney vision was a vision of national unity, national cohesion, what he called jointness, okay? And that is what we are pursuing. So those who talk about betraying Rodney, we are not betraying Rodney central to the Rodney, uh, the, the Rodney praxis, central to Rodney's philosophy was national wholeness, national co co um, cohesion, national unity that is premised on the broadest, the broadest unity. One of the differences we had with the PPP in the 1970s, and on another difference, was that they wanted to confine it to parties that were left, ideologically left. Okay. The WPA was very clear that our problem has always been a national problem. And so we must include all groups of different persuasion. We were prepared to work with the Liberator Party, which was right of center. We were prepared to work with other parties that were right of center, other forces in civil society. And the PPP did not want to do that. We have always been for a partnership 
of national unity that has the broadest possible participation, regardless of ideological and racial and ethnic uh, differences. Well, you mentioned the, the ideological position of the PPP, and you did say that you were a new kind of politics that would have been manifested in WPA. Oh, explain a bit more about this dogmatism that you're talking about in relation to the PPP. You just mentioned that they wanted only parties that were extreme left. Mm -hmm. but in any sense, is there any more to the party in terms of their position during that period? Well, they were aligned to the Communist International, the International Communist Movement. Um, and the International Communist Movement, of course, was uh, being guided at that time by uh, the kind of Marxist uh, interpretation that came out of the Soviet Union um, uh, th that really saw, cla saw class as the definitive thing. But, but, but more than that, that anything that did not uh, uh, subscribe to that uh, sterile class analysis, so for example, they didn't deal with the question of race. All right? So everything was reduced to, 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 to class and so forth. So the PPP could mobilize, mobilize based on race, all right? but could say, oh, no, our uh, ideology is, 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 is Marxism, right. and so it has to do with class. You see, uh, one of the other things about, about, about the PPP, that dogmatism, meant that their analysis of Guyana did not start with the concrete conditions in Guyana. The analysis start from this uh, ideological thing that was out there. Now, we were Marxists, all right? In fact, we said that we were independent Marxists, the WPS program of 1970. That's how we describe ourselves, as independent Marxists. That is, we accept the broad premise of Marxism. We accept, uh, we, we accept it and, and, and we accept the um, Marxist analysis of capitalism. What we didn't accept was some of the dogmas like the one-party state and such things that we felt that in our circumstances that we could not import some of those things into Guyana. In fact, we said very clearly all right, that um, our, our obje immediate objective was not to build socialism in Guyana. Our immediate objective was to democratize the society. And in order to democratize the society, you had to move further than just people who were Marxists to include other nationalists in this agenda. Okay. So you've mentioned in relation to Dr. Rupner Ryan and these positions that the PPP would have taken, that the WPA is not willing to simply sit back and allow them to launch this attack. And they talk about Rodney, betraying Rodney and all that, you dealt with that. But what, how do you expect to respond to the continued assault? Because, uh, and the use of the state media in particular, a lot of what is being peddled, you know, clearly are lies. Mm -hmm. um, how do we deal with the advantage that they have of the state resources at hand, the media, and they're using it in whatever means to defend? our position in relation to Dr. Rupert. Well, we need to use uh, programs like these, like this, other programs that we have access to, other um, sections of the media to get our word out. And one of the things, without being boastful, one of the things in the WPA, one of the things is that we are never short. We are never short of the ability to explain ourselves. We are never short of the ability to really speak to the issues in clear and analytical ways. Um, one of the things about this old Rodney thing, we have to go back. When Walter Rodney came back to Guyana and he joined the WPA, the PPP said to the WP and Walter Rodney, do not go into the Indian areas. Concentrate on the African areas, all right? They were trying to keep Dr. Rodney from going into Indian Guyanese communities. And one of the things we did in the 1970s was out of respect for the alliance that we had with the PPP. We only went into Indian Guyanese communities when we were invited. And we were invited quite a lot, all right? Um, Dr. Rodney played a pivotal role in the Arnold Rampasat trial 
um, which was a trial that involved a PPP activist, Arnold Rampasad, who was charged with murder, and Rodney and Kwayana, uh, Moses Bagwan, all WPA leaders, uh, played a pivotal role in bringing that um, case to the forefront and ensuring that justice was done uh, to Arnold Rampasad. So that's one. The, 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 the PPP didn't want Rodney in Indian areas. This Rodney that they talk about today and try to use against the WP. That's one. In 1979, when Rodney was leading the civil rebellion, the PPP described what we were doing as adventurism. Right? That we were out, Rodney was out on some adventure. In fact, one of the things we did in 1979 was to invite the PPP to come to the massive public meetings that we were holding around the country. We wanted Dr. Jagan to come. We wanted Janet Jagan to come. We wanted the big leaders to come. They did not come. The only PPP leader who spoke on, those, on that platform was Moses Nagamutu. All the others did not come. So again, this Rodney that they're bigging up today, they kept far away from him in 1979 when he was at the height of his activism in Guyana. Only Moses Nagamutu, I repeat, the only PPP leader who came and spoke uh, at, at, at those meetings. So that's the second thing. The third thing is that after Rodney, well, even before he died, Dr. Jagan went uh, to Howard University in 1979, and he was asked about the WPA, and he said, well, they're a group of uh, black intellectuals. He was asked about Dr. Rodney uh, both there and in an interview he did with a newspaper in England. Uh, and he said, well, uh, Rodney is just uh, attracting disaffected black people. So here again, trying hmm, to minimize Rodney's role in Guyana, trying to pigeonhole him in some little uh, obscure black leader and so forth. This is the Rodney that they're bigging up today. When Rodney died in 1980, June, there was an election in December 1980. And during that campaign, Dr. Jagan again, in a derogatory way, said to public meetings that Walter Rodney promised you all a Christmas present and you all got his body on a platter, right? Rodney during 79 said that if we worked very hard, by Christmas of 79, we could get rid of the regime. Now, that then was used to mock him by Dr. Jagan in 1980. And so, Dion, those are a few examples of how the PPP has dealt with Dr. Rodney when he was alive and after he died. They've been in office now for almost 19 years. They have not mounted an investigation, an inquest into Rodney's murder. Under pressure in 2005, they introduced a motion in the National Assembly. The PNC said they agreed. They agreed with the, 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 the resolution calling for an, inqu an inquiry. The PPP tabled the resolution. Then abstained. The PNC voted for it. The WPA voted for it. But the PPP abstained on its own resolution. And so, therefore, they have had 19 years. They have done nothing to bring uh, the, uh, uh, the, the matter um, uh, under, under an inquiry. More than that, here is Walter Rodney's, Walter Rodney, whose books are used all over the world, all universities in Africa, in Europe, in the United States of America. But here in Guyana, Rodney's books, his works, are not being used. He has children's books, Lachmi, Out of India, Kofi Badi, Out of Africa, which were written specially for children and which are adequate books to be used in schools. And yet this government has not seen it fit to use Dr. Walter Rodney, Rodney's work in the schools to help our children uh, build a sense of national uh, 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 cohesiveness, to build a sense of national identity that cuts across race. So all this talk about Dr. Rodney and how the WPA is betraying Rodney is not meant to, 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 to put Rodney in, in any good light, but it's meant to use Rodney as a political football to achieve their own narrow political ends of trying to isolate the WPA. Yeah, but the question of the relationship that the WPA would have now developed with the PNC, 
uh, is this something alien to the PPP itself? No, the PPP, in fact, as I said, historically argued that the PPP PNC must must be part of the national solution. We can argue, we can argue that we came to that after them, mm. right? Um, so, 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 so there is not in 1985. Sorry, let me go back further. In 1977, the PNC proposed, the PPP proposed a national patriotic front, that is a power sharing arrangement between itself and the, P the PNC. The WPA supported it. In 1985, the PNC, the PPP began talks with the PNC towards a power sharing government. And they even did that without informing us in, in, in the opposition. All right? Uh, and so they only start to move away from that position once they got into power. Now, this is the crucial thing. The PPP only wants unity with others when they're out of power. As soon as they smell power and they get close to power, they scuttle any attempts at unity. In 1990, elections were due. But because of the negotiations that were going through at the time to bring about um, Constitution. the constitutional reform, we could not meet the deadline. And so elections had to be postponed. Now, the WPA proposed in the Patriotic Coalition for Democracy that, look, what we should do is use this extra two years from 1990 to 1992 to set up a government of national unity and reconstruction, the same kind of thing we are t talking about now. And since the PNC was already in office, let the PNC leader, Mr. White, become the president, and uh, we have a government of nationality that includes the PNC, the WPA, the PPP, the other uh, members like the DLM and so on in the Patriotic Coalition for Democracy. We propose this to the PCV. The PPP said, well, the PNC will never agree to it, and so they weren't interested. But we asked for permission to go meet the PNC on this matter. And the WPA went, met with the PNC, and the PNC agreed. The PNC agreed for a government of national unity in 1990. Now, this is significant because part of the old demonizing of the present PNC is that they're anti this and they're all that kind of stuff. Now, let it be said that when we went to the PNC, even before the government was changed in 1990, on this issue of a, of a national, go 1992, of a national government, the PNC, the PNC said yes. We went back to the, P the PCD and said the PNC is ready to deal with this thing. The PPP said no. Because by that time, they realized that free and fair elections were here, and they knew that they were about to pull out their racial card from their pocket. It's always been there. And begin to play that. So they weren't interested in national unity. You see? So this is the history of the PPP. Whenever they back against the wall, they're for national unity. Whenever they smell power or are in power, they scuttle the whole question of national unity. And we've got to make that very clear to the Guyanese public that this whole issue of the APNU is not something that we invent yesterday. Ever since 1953, this has been the, 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 the focus of progressive people in the country. That is the way forward is based on partnership and national unity. Yeah, but in relation to the, um, okay, the APN, you would have been born and we would have gotten a kind of feeling in the country that people are for this movement. Uh, what advantages would the APN, APN you have over the parties contesting separately in the elections? Well, the first advantage of the APNU is that it is saying if it were to win the election, the very next day we will set up a broad-based government of national unity. We will go to the PPP. We will go, if the, if the AFC wins, um, representation, we will go to them and we will say, please join us in a government of national unity. All right? Now, that is the first clear advantage. We are the only organization that will be contesting the election that is prepared to say that and to say that openly. And I challenge, I challenge the AFC. 
I challenge the PPP to say that if they were to win the election tomorrow, they will approach the parties that did not get a majority of the vote to form a government of national unity. That is what we are proposing. For us, it's not about the AP and you winning and then taking all the seats and so on. That's not what we're interested in. That's not what this partnership is about. This partnership is about Guyana. And so, therefore, we're saying the government of national unity is the thing that we are going to move towards the very next day after winning the election. So that once we have a government of national unity, we free up the people of this country to get down to the business of national development, to get down to the business of turning this country with all of this potential, to turn it in, into the kind of productive space that it ought to be. We get down to the business of repairing that which has been disrepaired over the last uh, 19 years under this PPP rule, the rule of law, the, the old question of, of, of poverty, the old question of violence, the old question of crime, the old question of attracting the kind of investments into this country that will bring about economic relief for the working people of this country. Those are the kinds of things that we want to get into as soon as we get into office. And so therefore, what we are offering is a clear national agenda. Yeah, but the PPP, Donald Ramatar himself would have said that you don't trust him before the elections. Why would he want to get into something with people after the elections? If you can't trust him, now why you want to trust him? Why do you want to trust him for... As I said, as I said, as I said uh, some time ago, Dion, this whole question of trust is only being used as a smoke herring, right? Um, uh, 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 uh. This, whole, this whole question of trust is only being used as a smoke herring. Now, when political forces come together to work on a national program, what you need is a commitment to a program, right? I don't need to trust you. I don't need to trust the PPP. I don't need to trust um, the AFC. All I need to know is that the AFC and the PPP and whoever else are committed to moving this country forward. All right? Now, as you work together, you develop relationships. You develop a better understanding of each other. You develop a sense of where each party is coming from. And